Hello and welcome to Retro Tech Repair. Today uh, we're going to be taking a different approach. We are going to be working as quickly as we can, well not perhaps not as quickly as we can, uh, but without too much editing. We're not going to go in and do too much post editing on this and the idea behind that is really just to get you video content in the shortest possible time. So what you might find is that, that we have a few ums and ahs as we go through. And if you don't like that kind of thing, then maybe take a look at one of my other videos. But today we are going to be repairing and restoring this. As you know, I have a, a real liking, or as you might know, I have a real liking for handheld and tabletop games uh, from the 80s. So today we are going to be restoring an invader from space or repairing and restoring an invader from space. So let's take a quick look at the eBay listing. The item description was pretty basic. It's well worn and loved. The seller described it as vintage electronic game from the 80s, possibly late 70s, produced by Grandstand from Japan. It's a version of the famous arcade game from the time original Space Invaders, which swept the country, arcades everywhere. Requires a nine volt supply and transformer readily available, which I might be able to supply. We'll check my stores and we'll throw this in as well, if I can find one. Well, I didn't come with one, so I guess he didn't find one. Game works only on nine volt DC supply. Batteries don't seem to work it very well and didn't last very long anyway. So best on transformer. Signs of wear as you'd expect from something this age, well used. It, is high, it was highly addictive at the time. Okay, so here it is. And, on the face of it, yes, you know, it's got some wear, but you would expect, but it's not in terrible shape. It's uh, perhaps a little smaller than I remembered. I haven't had one of these in my hands for a long time. Uh, looks like it takes double A's. And when I look at the battery contacts, they seem to be in quite nice, quite nice condition. So it'll be interesting to see why this would work on the, focus on that. There we go, focus, focus. Uh, it'll be quite interesting to see why it would work on the DC jack, but not on the battery contacts, because the battery contacts look very clean. So uh, let's just see if the seller was correct and pop some batteries in here. Slide that in. And switch it on. No, nothing. Okay, well, looks like the seller was correct, so think we are going to have to take this apart. Of course I was going to take it apart anyway. Let's see what we had inside here, so it's not such a big deal. It looks like it might be as simple as four Phillips screws. Hopefully that's it. I don't really know why. So I'm going to try and do a lot of this video uncut, or close to uncut, so that I can get content out a little sooner. This is definitely catching on something. I feel like this, maybe this plastic needs to come off. There's a, as I work my way around this, It feels like there's definitely something securing it in the middle, but I can't see what. I don't see anything on the front that would maybe be a hidden panel or anything. I don't see any screws beyond these four behind, but there's definitely something holding it in the middle here. I'm reluctant just to force it open. Uh, so I'm going to see if I can uh, pause the video a moment, take a look and see what might be catching in there. So I did get inside, honestly I don't remember whether I'd re remember to press record or not, but what I had to do was that these sticky pads were glued onto the back of the display board, or back of the display, um, I don't know how you screen I suppose you call it, and they were stuck there. And so I had to literally get in with the screwdriver and just kind of prise those away to get in there. And then I've taken this little power board up here so we can try and apply some power to the um, to the board directly. 
All right, so uh, what I decided I'm going to do is just gonna solder a little jumper wire here and between these two contacts just to bypass the switch. And I think as well, I'm gonna take the rest of this assembly out of the out of the plastics while I'm waiting for my soldering iron to warm up because getting the board away from the plastics just makes the soldering a little easier, sometimes at least. And then we can just work from this. Here, I bought some new solder with my new soldering iron. Unfortunately, it's a little bit thin. It might be nice if I was doing some surface, simple surface mount work, but for this kind of thing, it's a little bit thin. And we'll do the same on the other end. So these are longer than I need, really, so let's just do some of that. I think somewhere I might have some thicker solder, so we'll see if we can find that as well. Okay, with those ends tinned, we'll now bypass this switch here. So one end we'll just solder onto here. I might just approach the track there, just make sure I didn't Let's do that again. There we go, it doesn't need to be a perfect job, it's really just so I can bridge this switch here. Okay. Alright. Pop the batteries back in. As I say, it is permanently switched on now. Thanks to that jumper. So we'll trace our 5.5 volts around the board. We have it here. We should have it here coming in. But we do not. Just check them on there. Nope. It's not coming in. It's coming in here. But it has not found its way to the board. So interestingly, it must be getting lost in this connector. 5.5 volts there. This is the other end of the keep that that's the other end of the positive wire. 5.5 volts. This is where the positive exits the connector. Nothing. So, interestingly, it looks like there is a failure somewhere inside this connector. Okay, so I'm back and I have been looking at this connector. Let's just move it into the center of the shot a little bit. And it seems that, we'll use something to point. It seems that uh, power comes in on the red wire here it goes into the barrel jack here, and in fact, you can see now that I have I have that 5.5 volts on this, uh, on that red wire. What I've done, by the way, is I just have a little spring clip here connected onto my meter rather than a conventional lead, just so I'm not having to hold it still or hold it in contact all the time. So then if I go on here, I see from this the end of this red wire, I have, I have my 5 volts but it is not making its way to this wire. So this connector has only two volts on this wire. So I think, so I think what is supposed to happen, I Googled this, is that um, when I look at these barrel connectors, there's a barrel connector advert that I found here. The way that it describes it is that uh, when no plug is inserted, the insertion detection pin will be shorted to the sleeve. So I believe that this is the insertion detection pin, and this is the sleeve, So, and then the other one is the, is the center pin, negative is the center pin. So it, what it looks like is happening is that with no connector inserted, these two should be shorted together, which will then let power flow through to, to the game. But when that's not the case, these two are not shorted together when no, uh, when nothing is inserted. 
And now the seller said it worked off the power supply. So presumably when you put a connector in there, uh, this is, is open, so you're not charging the batteries up, but you then have the connector uh, will then supply the five volt positive to this pin and the game will play. So let's go ahead and try that. And then assuming that is the case, we'll spend a little bit more time looking at this connector. I don't have one of these, unfortunately, unless I were to salvage one from something else, another game somewhere. I don't believe I have one of these. I will double check because I do have some scrap parts and that would be the easiest solution. But assuming I don't have, then uh, we might have to take this apart or, or fiddle with it in some other way. But first of all, let's just see if the game works when we do connect it directly in here. Okay, so out of shot here now, I have my bench power supply set to six volts. I have my handy little DC jack adapter and I have tested to make sure that the center pin is negative. So hopefully when I plug this in now, it should work. Here we go. Hopefully you can see that the display has come up and uh, unfortunately the start button is over. It's been removed temporarily. So let's just try that. Okay. Well, I'm not convinced that's working as it should, but it at least has lit up. Maybe you need to do a power reset or something like that. So um, definitely, it does work with the power supply, or at least it partially works, maybe completely works with the power supply, but it does not work when we rely on the batteries. The batteries are still in there. So the seller was quite correct in his description, but that doesn't help me because I don't think I have another one of these connectors. Before I go into tearing this apart, I'm just gonna go and check. So I have here a uh, different game from Grandstand, a parts game. I bought on eBay just for just for parts. Although I can't figure out how to get in it. So let's just slide these aside and see if I can force my way in here. There we go. And it looks like it has a connector. Now it could of course suffer from the same problems, but it might not. So let's snip it out and see. It's a bit dirty, but that's okay. So yeah, it's a scrap, scrap game. It's kind of interesting. I think it's a football game. Uh, some of these scrap games, I'm hoping that I might one day just have a little play with and see if I can get them to come into life. So maybe for a future video, you'll see that if you're interested in me trying to uh, maybe not restore it, but at least get this to play, let me know. In the meantime, I'm gonna take a look at this connector here. Now I think what we had said, if I put this now to continuity, was that when there is no barrel inserted, that these, they kind of detect and the other pin should be shorted together. And indeed that's the case. And then when a connector is inserted, it should be open. Great. So it looks like this is a good connector. So I'm going to go ahead and now and put it into our invader from space game. Let's put that on here. Again. And then the two, perhaps the easier one of the short ones, the red wire here. That goes to the detect. Good. And then finally these two need to come off and go onto the shield. Very good. Well, perhaps not very good, but hopefully good enough. So we'll slide that back in there and we'll try it with our batteries. What do you think when turning over, is it gonna be working? 
Yes. Yes, it is. It is working. Excellent. The flicker that we see on the filming is not there when I actually play the game. I might try when I've reassembled this and we're doing some final shots. I might try to see if I can get rid of that flickering by some settings on my camera. But if you know how I can do that, then please do let me know. In the meantime, uh, we're going to go ahead and get this all assembled. Before we do that, I'm going to try it on the DC power jack as well. I'm just making sure it still works with that before we fasten it all back together. Ah, oh, we don't have the switch. So, let's see if we can just short that out. Very good. All right, so hopefully when the switch is in, everything should be working just as it was meant to be. Interesting the way they glued this, glued this in. Interesting the way it didn't make any noise. I think I'm going to try and temporarily connect this back together because I would have expected some sounds or something. So before we just notice as I put the sounder back in there, there is a sounder, so I'd expect some sounds. We didn't get any. So we'll temporarily slide this back together. Let's take a look at this sounder. We said there was no sound, and indeed there wasn't. Uh, really not too familiar with these sounders and whether they can be rescued, but if not, we might have one in the one of my scrap games. It looks a little dull. So we can flow a bit more solder onto that. Good connection here if we can. Come on, Roger. If somebody who makes Christmas cards can do it, then I'm sure you can. Nope, I can't. It's not stuck at all. I think we might have to resort to a little bit of flux or something on here to get this to stick. The first thing, of course, is uh, we'll take our fiberglass brush again, we'll clean it off. Have some oxidation or something there. We'll get some clean solder on this one rather than that oxidized solder that all the, fl the flux has gone from. So let's get that off. All right, let's see if that made contact. If not, then we might need to go in and see if we can get a separate sounder from my parts bin. That's promising. I don't know what the sound effects are supposed to be like, of course. But one of these is start, so let's try. So we Excellent. All right, very good. I'm happy with that. Let's get this now assembled and then we can get it cleaned up and ready to play. So I have my trusty toothbrush and my trusty window cleaner and 
I don't, hopefully won't need the meter anymore. So we'll switch that off and get that out of the way. I don't need many of these tools actually. So, uh, do the buttons first, I think. Just a quick. Use a variety of different different cleaners for these things. This is the unedited version, but nonetheless I'll probably I'll probably fast forward through some of this. This front cover has a lot of kind of little nooks and crannies in it as well, so I'm hoping that the treatment here with the toothbrush will get a lot of those cleaned up. Already looks significantly better. And our unloved game is starting to look a little more respected and cared for than it did before. Okay, good. We'll get the screws back in, then we'll come in and clean the back like we clean the front. So, let's just give it a final clean up on the back. Quite well. And the rest of the plastics here. There we are. Not perfect, but it was never going to be. Let's turn it on and try it. Okay. Level one, two, and three. Let's well, I've started at level two, but that's okay. Let's go. Hours of fun here, I am sure. As I say, the flickering that you see on the camera is not present in real life. 